America has become a charity case. Donald Trump begs the Chinese for money to open factories. Donald Trump, he begs the Saudi Arabians to invest money here and there. They get on their hands and knees. Ivanka Trump goes to Kentucky and thanks the Japanese for opening up a factory in Kentucky. We beg these rich nations to give us money. Is that not a situation of a charity case? We are a charity case. And then you have all the super rich in America. And they have become super guilty in more ways than one. But for our discussion today, I will bring up the fact that most of them, most of the super rich in America, are starting to feel guilty about how this Federal Reserve banking cartel, the system, allowed them to accumulate unfathomable amounts of riches, while most Americans don't even know where their next paycheck is coming from, or let alone if next month they will be able to feed their children. So, and for a small amount of these dumber billionaires, you know, not all of them are feeling guilty. Some of them are still in denial. But luckily in America, we have people out there who are letting these billionaires know that they should feel guilty. And of course, the saddest part of this whole mess is that most Americans don't even realize how the corrupt, evil banking system is responsible for the whole thing. And I guess at this point, I should make it clear to all the snowflakes out there, just in case one of them has accidentally found this video, I am not against capitalism. I repeat, I am not against capitalism. I am against crony capitalism that took over America. And I believe that China has a more pure pure form of capitalism than we do now. And that is what our conversation is about today. How China is winning and we have basically lost. And yes, we are not only a basket case, we are a charity case. But it was not always that way. Many of you remember when we had a middle class. Many of you remember the 1950s when we did not have millions and millions of people living under the bridges. It was once a land of opportunity. There was no government regulation written by corporate bankers to give their chosen corporations a big advantage over mom and pop. <laughs> Think about that. Because I know Bill Gates doesn't. Bill Gates thinks about donating his money to the pharmaceuticals or whatever his evil mind is thinking about. But I think I'll repeat that. I think it's so important that I'm going to repeat it for the slim chance that there might be a snowflake out there that has accidentally found this video. So I'm going to repeat it again. Back when America was the land of opportunity, there was not very much government regulation written by corporate bankers to give their chosen corporations a big advantage over mom and pop. Think about that. We used to have mom and pop stores. And when you had mom and pop stores, when Americans were entrepreneurs, we did not have this. None of that homeless. We were, maybe we were not as rich as China is today, but we got by. We got by, and we did not have any of this nonsense here. This is pathetic. This is what the super rich are feeling guilty about when they see the homeless camps, when they drive by the homeless camps in their Rolls Royce, and they have to rub elbows with the normal people. They, I know they don't walk around in this type of neighborhood, but occasionally they do have to be around normal Americans who are struggling paycheck to paycheck. And don't get me wrong, not all of the billionaires are feeling guilty. 
I mean, none of their children are. The banker's children and their poor charity case friends, they battle for who can put their nose higher up in the air. They are pathetic. Look at them. The elite gloat their power. They even make up Hollywood hoaxes sometimes, like in Chicago, and they get off scots free. While the poor people, well, the poor people are usually thrown in prison. They throw their wealth and power in your face like shit hitting the fan placed directly in front of the unwashed masses. I mean, how long can a crony capitalistic system survive? I think we're about ready to find out. But let's get back on track today. Our story is about how America has become a charity case and China is growing. They're creating billionaires. I think they're creating about two billionaires a week. And our billionaires, well, our billionaires are pathetic and are feeling guilty. Quite frankly, the future is here and it is ugly. The implications and the ramifications of a crony capitalistic system where the dumb got all the money somehow. Well, that's what happens in a crony system. The best of the best don't get the money. The best of the best are pushed aside. And the criminal class is pushed up to the top. The dumbasses. And like I say, they got rich, and now they feel guilty, and they don't know what to do because they're morons and they're idiots. So they say, oh, we'll donate our money to the poor. I mean, if you give a moron a free meal on Thanksgiving, well, they have a meal for one day, and then they go back to this. This is how they live. There's no way to live. And then the rich kids who donate their money, they put their noses in the air and say, oh, yes, we did good. We gave a poor a meal on Thanksgiving. It makes me sick every Thanksgiving when I see the rich people and the people with jobs. They go out there and they give the poor a meal on Thanksgiving and they feel so good about themselves. I mean, I really, it makes me, makes me want to puke because they're so dumb. They don't know how to fix the system. I mean, you have to, how dumb do you have to be to give somebody a meal for one day and think you've done something? You've got to be pretty damn stupid. I mean, again, if you teach a moron how to fish, then they will have a meal for a lifetime. Do I really have to teach these billionaires things that fifth graders knew? Back in 1950s, fifth graders knew that if you give somebody a fish, they'll have a meal for a day. But if you teach them how to fish, then they'll have a meal for a lifetime. But then it even gets darker. Imagine you have bureaucrats in government who take orders from the bankers, who have the lobbyists write the laws, and then they write laws to hoard all the American land, all the wilderness, all the beautiful land where you could hunt and fish. The BLM is ordered to hoard that land. Put up fences and big signs saying, this is government land, stay away. So even if you were to teach the unwashed masses how to fish and how to hunt because they don't have a job, because the robots are going to take all their jobs, so you say, okay, we'll teach them how to hunt and fish and grow a garden. But then if you have the BLM and the bankers and the lobbyists and the politicians who are then hoarding the land, which is happening as we speak, Try to go out there on your land. They call it your land. That's what the BLM says. The BLM says, we're just managing it for you. We're putting these big fences up to protect the land for you. You're not allowed to go out there and hunt and fish unless you give us some money for a license. And you do have to get down on your hands and knees and beg us for that license. But you cannot take too much. Don't think you're going to be able to take enough fish and hunting food for your family. Oh, no, no, no. That's not going to work. That's not how the BLM and the government and the bureaucrats and the lobbyists and the bankers, that's not how they work. No. You're going to have to go out there on your hands and knees and beg them for a hamburger flipping job. You're going to have to get out there on your hands and knees and beg them for a bartender or a waitress or a porter job. That's where they want you. And to make matters worse, 
That little bartender job you got is not enough to buy yourself a little homestead, a little house to raise your family. No, you and your wife are going to have to get two servant jobs so you can rent an apartment from this slumlord who was able to get into Harvard because his daddy gave them $2.5 million and because he was able to get through Harvard with money, then the bankers decide that he is worthy for a billion-dollar loan to buy those run-down apartments so he can rent those apartments to you, the unwashed masses. You see, America is now 1,000% crony capitalism. Crony. And the cronies are so proud of their accomplishments that they throw it in our faces every goddamn day. They are in your face with it now. But enough of reality. Let's talk about what's happening today and what happened in the past. I mean, there's a reason why America is falling. The dumbest are in charge. We already know that. So we know America is losing, but the implications of that is when you have a loser, you normally have a winner on the other side, and that winner is now China. As I said before, I believe it's China that has a more pure form of capitalism, and they are creating m many, many new millionaires every day, but, th but I also hear that they're creating a couple billionaires every week because they are creating something. They are making something. They have factories. They are creating something. This is reminiscent of America at one time, isn't it? So let's go back into history. We all know that China is doing very well. A lot of people don't know why. Many, many Americans probably think that China is still communism. <laughs> no. I think. America is more communist than China. But let's go back in history. In 1890, uh, in America, parents put 1,000% of their efforts into preparing their children for the tough world that we live in. It took a lot of hard work and preparation. The parents knew this. And if the, and if the parents were successful, and the children were trained properly and well, then when the children grew up, they were able to take care of their parents who then got old. And the system worked pretty good in America. The parents cared about the children. They trained them properly. And then when the children got successful and had jobs and businesses and entrepreneurs, they were able to take care of their old parents because they had respect for their parents. Now, this is sort of the same thing that's happening in China today. So in 2019, the Chinese parents put 1,000% of their efforts into preparing their children for the tough world we live in. And if the children are well trained by their parents, then the children will be able to look after their parents when they get old. Did I not just say that about America in 1890? Did I repeat myself? Yes, I did. Yes. China is America. 1890s. And how exciting could it be? Imagine how much excitement. There would have been living in 1890 America, the land of opportunity, and now living in China in 2019. <laughs> but we're not done by a long shot. That was 1890 America. That was 2019 China. How about 2019 America? Okay, yeah, this ought to be really, really fun. The parents pawn their children off to the public school where they learn you get a trophy for last place. They learn about drugs and alcohol. They learn that they are not as pretty as the models on TV and peer pressure. And they learn the government is always right. And join the army and be all you can be. But if your parents are rich, well then they can bribe Harvard 
with two million dollars and when you get out of college the banks will then loan you a billion dollars to buy a rundown apartment to rent to all the poor saps who got kicked out of the army basically be all the bankers want you to be so I think we can all agree the American system works pretty good if you're rich and if you're involved with the bankers but it goes even deeper than that doesn't it if we're going to talk about how many billionaires and millionaires are being created in China, well, we must talk about how many millionaires and billionaires there are in America, because that's what people are always going to come back at you. When you say that China has all the factories and China is creating this and China is creating that, all the snowflakes and the morons and the idiots will always come back at you with, but America still has all the most millionaires and billionaires. Okay, let's talk about it, okay? If you are rich anywhere in the world, you would want to have a home in America, wouldn't you? That's pretty simple. Like I said, the system in America is based on being rich, okay? So if you're anywhere in the world, of course you're, you're, of course you're going to want to move to America because you're rich and you know you're going to have a pretty good life in America if you're rich. So it's easy for foreign rich people to create a fake shell company in America, a fake shell company, pretend to be an entrepreneur when in fact are they, they're nothing more than criminals in their native homeland who somehow in cahoots with their corrupt bankers back there in their foreign land, they stole all the money from the peasants, and then they took all that stolen loot, they brought it to America where they're living the good life as a millionaire, so-called entrepreneur, and they're on the list of statistics. The facts, yes, America has all the millionaires, but not because we're making anything anymore, not because we're creating anything, it's because we are accepting the criminals from all over the world, telling them, bring your stolen loot here, put it in the bank, create a fake shell company, live the good life in America, spit on the unwashed masses, spit on the peasants, but make, make no mistake about it. We are not creating millionaires by opening up companies and creating products. We are creating millionaires in America, like I said, by bringing criminals here who want to escape their homeland. They want to come over here and hide and launder their money. So again, we can all agree that most at least 90% of the new millionaires in America are foreign criminals hiding and laundering their money in America. Now, why do I mention this? Because today's conversation is about what country creates, I repeat, creates the most new millionaires. I'm here to tell you that Asia and China with their factories, they are creating millionaires. Is this not what capitalism is? Yes, capitalism is creating something. Entrepreneurs, businesses, creating something real that when you drop it on your foot, it hurts. In America, what we're creating does not hurt when you drop it on your foot. What we are creating in America is something that hurts in our heart and our soul because it is all fake. And corrupt. So what is my argument today? I stand to reason that because of corruption and greed of a small evil group of people in America, that America has now become a charity case. Some might even say that we are a basket case. And then on the flip side, China has somehow created a more pure form of capitalism than we cur currently have. Now, of course, China is not 100% pure capitalism. To my knowledge, there is no pure capitalistic system on the planet. Human greed and corruption prevents that. But pure capitalism is really the best system that we have ever created in 10,000 years 
that I, in my opinion, but now, sadly, America is now 1,000% crony capitalism. And the, like I said before, the cronies are so proud of their accomplishments that they flaunt it and throw it in our faces daily. And with all our problems in America, what do the cronies do? They go over to the Middle East and beg for oil money. They beg for billion-dollar bailouts of their 666 building. While we have 10,000 baby boomers retiring every day. So I haven't really talked about modern America. You know, 1970, 1980, 90. Because that's kind of where it all started to fall apart. And now we're starting to see the implications of an old retired person who has no money. Like I said, 10,000 baby boomers retiring each and every day. Well, you can guess this ain't going to end well. You see, the problem is most of these baby boomers who were working in the 60s and 70s and 80s, they were selfish. I know. I know many of them. I lived it. I saw how selfish some of the parents were in the 70s, the 80s. They were truly selfish. And they never worked hard enough to ensure that their children had the skills to make it or even to survive. Remember when I talked about 1890 America? And 1890 America is where the parents strived and put 1,000% into making sure their children had the skills to survive, but that was not the case in the 60s and the 70s and the 80s. No, we got weak, we got pathetic, we got selfish, and the parents no longer put that much effort into training the children on how to survive. No, they left that to the public schools. Now, I'm kind of limited in time here. But that was where it all fell apart. When they put mom back to work, and then mom shipped the children off to the public school where they were ruined, they were miseducated, and where are they all ending up now? Where are all these children ended up now? They're ending up under the bridge with no life skills, no survival skills. And then on top of that, you have their baby boomer parents retiring 10000 a day, and they don't have enough money in their retirement. You basically have the blind leading the blind, while the bankers are laughing their asses off. <laughs> yeah, they invested all their profits into Asia. I, I grow bored telling Americans they live in slavery. I grow bored showing America pictures of our ruins are closed down, run down, abandoned factories. I crossed the United States on Route 66. I took pictures of the ruins. I showed America the factories were down, but nobody seems to give a shit. No, as long as they get their snap card and their welfare, they're pacified like little babies with something in their mouth. No. This is not going to end well for America. As the rich put their noses in the air and they think they're better than us. As they vacation in Europe, they do summers in Europe and they go to Mumbai and Singapore and Thailand. And we, we here in America, we're a basket case. Yes, I tell you, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of telling the same story over and over. And then, but what we, I'll close, I'll close out with there are some Americans who are still bowing down to the Federal Reserve banking cartel. That's what really irks me. When you have Americans out there, rich Americans, and lots of people even read them, you get guy, you got guys like Martin Armstrong. Now I, I respect Martin Armstrong. He's a genius in many ways, but he's got one Achilles heel. He's got one weakness. He's shilling for the Federal Reserve banking cartel almost daily. It's almost sad. Somebody as smart 
as Martin Armstrong, and he's not the only one. So many of these people out there bowing down to the Federal Reserve banking cartel. These influential people, most of them from, from New York, who shill for the bankers, they claim that the solution is to take the American government debt and invest it in corporations. Yes, the same corporations that the 666 gang control. The same corporations that are created by the bankers. In one big vicious circle, Coca-Cola buys Bank of America, and Bank of America buys Enron, and Enron buys AT&T, and the, and the banks loan them all money, and they keep on loaning the money around in one big circle. The common denominator is the corporations get huge amounts of money, and you and I get nothing. Mom and pop get absolutely nothing. So when you hear these New York shills, who come up with these cockamamie ideas to keep the Federal Reserve banking cartel in power. Yes, let them control the money. And the United States government debt should then be invested in the corporations that the bankers control. It's all one big scam. You see, as long as you let the Rothschilds and the Goldmans make the rules, you will be their slave. You will be their servant. You will be their bartender, their waiter, but not only you, also your children, your grandchildren, and your great-grandchildren. I grow tired of monetary slavery. How about you?